I've made a lot of Git mistakes and just learning it over the past couple years has been immensely rewarding and has made me level up my game and just made me a better person overall. Now, I use GitHub here, but you can use GitLab, you can use Bitbucket. There's a lot of Git repos you can do. The only ch reason I choose GitHub is because that's where most people are. And I love the collaborative effort of GitHub. That's how I learn a lot is from actually looking at other people's work or having other people correct my work. So that's the beauty of it. But there's a lot of mistakes people make. So I want to just kind of go over GitHub and just the big things right out of the get go. Now down here, I have obviously used a lot. I have over a thousand contributions, uh, 60 something repos. I'm in GitHub every single day uh, for the most part. I've had a couple periods of interactivity, but not too much. I, I really love it. I make sure I am contributing at least a couple times a week. So with all that said, uh, let's move into one of my repos and first start out with just some basic mistakes that I was making when I first started and that probably if you haven't used github very much you probably make as well this is my biggest github project right here the windows utility um, but I've had tons of contributions uh, over 60 contributors and, and it has been immensely rewarding and I've been able to get it to a manageable state even with all these contributors all these forks all these just everything I just get bombarded with issues pull requests, everything. And we'll probably even do a pull request live on, on this video. But the first thing is like, let's say there's a script here. Like, let's say you want to manually install Winget. This is using a special version to basically get Winget installed on any version of Windows uh, separate from the script. And you want this code in your stuff. So if you look here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you look at the code, it's just a simple uh, PS1 file, PowerShell script. To get it, you could copy the code right up here, which just copies all of the stuff in here. You could actually just hit raw, and this gives you the raw script. So you could actually take this, copy it, and then if you're on Windows, you would probably curl it. But let's say I'm here, you could just wget, paste it in, and then we could go winget.ps1, and you get the entire script right in right in your, your your terminal or if you you copy it you can do it directly into notepad if if you're in windows so hugely powerful but one thing that i didn't know about and i, I still screw up on this every once in a while these raw files are not live meaning if i do a commit and then i immediately come to the raw file come here i might see my change here but as soon as i hit raw sometimes this lags behind three or four minutes and sometimes up to five minutes, I think. And that's something to know. So if you're constantly updating and then pulling the raw file, you're going to get an older version sometimes. And you have to wait for that raw file to get updated, uh, it, especially in GitHub, because it's just such a big platform. The other thing is a lot of the branches. I made a little cheat sheet on this. Do not make uh, GitHub mistakes. Um, this is just some just things I have to remember about like switching branches and understanding the things that go on with it. An easier way to vert, like visualize this, especially when starting out, is using like the GitHub desktop app. Let me just clone like my most famous repository. We'll go Windows Util. This has a, a couple different branches. Typically, there's a test branch going on, and then there's the default main branch. So anytime someone submits a thing, I like to separate, hey, this new contributor is coming to the project. I want to see if something messes up. I want to make sure it's done on a test branch. So those that are actively using the main branch, which is about 10,000 users a day now, I don't want to screw up all those people's livelihoods that are depending on this script to work all the time. So typically, I always submit to the test branch. It's not to say sometimes that main branch might get a little messed up for a couple minutes uh, if I do a bad commit, but it's less likely because I'm doing all my tests on this other branch. So how do we switch those branches? Now, obviously, here we could just switch over to test, and then we'd be on the test branch with all the changes. But another way is when you're in the actual console here and we're over here, we could do a git branch dash a and it kind of shows you what what ones that are there. So like, let's say we wanted to test out or, or switch branches to the test. We could easily do that in command line as well as the GitHub desktop and typically GitHub checkout. And I believe we can just go like that. And then it switches to the branch test. And then we're on the test branch, which 
if we do a git pull it's pulling down those changes and we officially are on this other branch and if we want to switch back to the main branch we just check out main and then we switch back to the main and it dumps all those test changes this is where it's so super powerful because you can do all your tests on one and then come back to the other now we talked about pull requests well we actually already have a pull request here by actually a new contributor i've never actually seen him what exactly is he doing he's making this and putting it to the test branch so he's already doing it well if someone's trying to commit to your main branch typically i always just deny that pull request but let's see what the actual he's doing he's wanting to install title i think it's like a music software and just add it right here pretty self-explanatory pretty easy this guy actually did it properly i'll say i've reviewed and approved those changes and then once it comes in here i can squash and merge this into the test branch and what this just did was it took someone else's contribution we reviewed it and said hey yes this is exactly what it is and then merged it in the main branch now having said that i find the success rate of this about 50 percent of the time and if you don't run a test branch in a main branch and you just have a main branch on your project you're going to probably get 80 percent bad commits one having those two branches forces people to understand the branches and if they understand branches and how your project's structured they're typically going to do a lot better on the the good commits and good pull requests you're going to get better feedback uh, but it just depends on how you structure your project as you see here i've structured it in a way where i get a lot more good commits than i was when i first started and that's just a testament to how it is set up so to look at these changes we could even come back to github desktop let's just switch over to the test branch fetch pull and you can see we pulled that change down and if we want to look at that change we can just cat that application and um, actually let's just cat grep title and you can see that was added right here um, so that that did make it into the actual script we've already pulled down the changes we've already committed it so other users that are contributing to the project will now be able to see the title music player in there which is kind of neat uh, i love that that's so easy that we could just show that right here on the stream for such a real basic commit now some commits i will warn you don't accept certain pull requests if you go to files changed and it's like we changed 3,000 lines of code and you have a 3,000 line code project they effectively changed everything in your project i call this nuke the world commits because effectively that's not your project anymore it's something completely different so don't accept mass pull requests typically you want your pull request to be somewhat small and manageable and read it uh, Linus Torvalds the, the creator of Git said the best way to determine whether or not to do a pull request is do you understand it and if you don't understand a pull request you shouldn't use it next up is issues this is how uh you develop your project so this project over here on when you tell i think we're almost over a thousand issues now that have been submitted and you can see just basic things now a lot of these commits people come in here and go it don't work again about half the times you're just going to be deleting and closing nonsense issues but it's not to say all issues are bad. Even some of the more basic stuff that gets submitted, sometimes I'm like, I look at it and I can, I can extract a nugget of, of wisdom out of there. So here's one. I current, I added a disable IPv6 uh, v uh, option. It's not by default. It's a whole different video. But if you do disable IPv6, uh, you'll notice that some things like Toretto uh, interfaces will not work and certain games rely on that for communication i think forza does and some other uh, xbox apps so kind of interesting um but this is a great issue because it's something that's not really apparent it's like a niche something you wouldn't typically check in like a, a q a but i love it just kind of come in here and be able to see all these different issues but setting up issues is a big thing and i kind of go into that Typically, you would set up a template that autofill this in for a user. So they'll have to describe the bug, steps to reproduce, expected behavior, and typically screenshots. All these, if the user submits all these, typically it's a really good issue. Uh, but you're going to get that about 20% of the time, I'd say. You know, not very often do people actually fill out this whole form, but having it there will get you better issues. Now, a lot of times people just erase all this and 
again say it don't work and you know those those you just have to delete and if they they get really annoying you can always uh ignore or ban that person from contributing which is good but for the most part i don't ever have to really do that github's a really nice place to submit these issues and develop a project now rollbacks are also something else i didn't know about and know how to do properly but i just did one specifically on on the github utility because i was working on a, a laptop i hadn't used very much and i was on an old test branch that was no longer existed and i did a bunch of commits and then i realized oh crap i needed it on this 913 test branch and what happened was I had to do a rebase, which means merging these two branches, these two test branches into one, and then trying to get those into uh, main, if if you wanna go that route uh, down the road. So merging those was a nightmare, and I ended up failing my rebase, and this is where this history system comes into play, and it's just amazing. I wish I discovered this a long time ago, is it helps you uh, fix big problems. So right here, I made a bunch of different uh, commits, but since it was an old test branch, it erased or it basically didn't get some of the changes on the newer test branch. This is where you get that and you're like, oh no, I need those new changes on that one branch and I need these changes, these new changes over here. And that's when the rebase comes in. I tried to do it here and combine those and it didn't take it, there was some conflicts and i didn't do a good job during the merge now vs code has a merge uh resolver that that's decent but again it's hit and miss sometimes on a rebase i'm still not very good at rebases i'm learning getting better but it's a very dangerous thing to do especially on a main branch you don't never want to rebase in main branch i would say always uh hopefully on a test branch but when that happened what i did was i just kind of came back to like this one that i knew was good from an earlier version and then you can actually just take this and create a new uh branch from this commit so then it rewinds the clock back to that commit and then creates a whole new branch and from that, you could fix it up from that branch and then delete the the bad branches and then go, okay, this is my new test branch, test out everything. And then once that's good, merge it into main and then you're good to go. So that's what I ended up doing. I had, I screwed up my test branch. Then I was like, okay, I'm coming back here. I'm creating a new branch from this commit. And then I'm actually doing, I'll, I'll just redo my work a little bit and touch up some of these, these improvements I made on the test branch. The big thing too is don't let your branches get too stale. The one thing I noticed every month I try to do the commit on the test branch. So there's not uh, or a pull request on it. So that test branch is only usually 30 to 60 days old. As I've gotten to become a better Git user, I am doing commits every time I make a change. And then I do pull requests at least once a month. Uh, usually I don't like more than 20 or 30 commits in one pull request. So then if something like this does happen, I'm not redoing, you know, 100 or 200 commits or something silly if I have to rewind back to an older branch. But it's so cool to have this functionality and I really wish I found it sooner. And then the final thing is kind of unit tests. Uh, sometimes when you look at these projects and you go into the .git workflows, you can see there's unit tests. And what these are is there's actually linters that go through your code. And once you do a pull request, it'll come up and then it'll give a little green checkbox. A lot of people don't realize when they're looking at these projects, this up here means there's unit tests. And if you click on it, it's looking at this. So you can see it's analyzing my Power, you know, PowerShell script. And the beauty of doing unit tests before doing like, let's say a pull request, usually it, it sits there and says, hey, we're still doing unit tests, don't squash and merge yet. It's going through and when it does the linting, if I mess up and forget like a bracket or something with my code, it's gonna find that error and say, hey, this code isn't good, it's just gonna fail and then everyone's gonna have a whole bunch of errors when they go to run your script. Uh, so that's really cool that you can add those into your GitHub projects and they just run automatically whenever you do a, a, a push to your project. And you can see that in real time right here. But 
I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I don't want to overload too many people. I just wanted to show some of the big things I didn't understand about Git and, and usually using GitHub that now as I get, use it more and more, I just absolutely love it. Every single day I'm in here and, and trying to do something and I just keep learning more and more things that are just such amazing tools. And it, it makes a one-man band like me able to collaborate with you know tens you know 20 30 60 people on one of my repositories so it's like having a team of people at your disposal that are are immensely gifted i could never afford to uh, afford to hire them but they're just very nice enough to look through my code and find little things or do little improvements here and it's so awesome to be able to learn and, and take from other folks and just make a better product than I, I think anyone else can make. Like even big companies have issues with this type of thing. And even with massive programming teams, they're going to run into problems where a literally open source project run by one person properly that has is popular on GitHub can get better development than the huge company. That's that's insane. That's insane to me that that's where we are in life. Uh, in in the programming world and I'm just so excited about this I just love it and uh, I hope you love github too I know a lot of times that people look at it and go ah oh, it's github I, I, I just can't I can't deal with how complex that is it's just for developers but really there's a lot that goes on with github and I just wanted to showcase some of my mistakes some of the things I wish I knew earlier in this video let me know what I missed what do you love about github or or git if you're using another service please let me know down in the comments. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.